the first test was when I had my husband read the draft because I wouldn't let him look at anything because right. he was like, can I see the first time? <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> get out of here. I didn't want anybody's opinions or their worries to cloud it until it was out. And Sasha still hasn't read it. <laughs> uh, she's like, I'm, I'm getting to it, Mom. I'm a senior. You know, that would be Sasha. I brought a friend with me. Oh. These are my booktube friends. Hi. Hey, booktube friends. Hi. Today I am meeting the one and only Michelle Obama. Francesca. It's nice it's to so meet you. It's so great to meet you. We're gonna breathe the same air. I might not breathe ever again. One thing that I think kind of really spoke to me was how important it is for successful people and anyone really to kind of block out those critics and naysayers and I think that's something we all struggle with, especially because of social media, oh, yeah. when you're dealing with insecurity, or when you are letting those negative things kind of get to you, what are some of the ways that you're able to kind of overcome them? It is messages? a great question, and it is important for your generation. I talk to my kids about this all the time. What do I do? I turn it off. Mm. It's, it's like, <laughs> you wait, can't. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> you can't read it. I mean, I tried everything. I tried reading the good and the bad, and I tried reading in the dark and reading it when I felt good about myself. So it, it, it's developing the discipline mm. of when you're in those spaces, you, you can't read that stuff. Yeah. Like, Listen, I, needed you, I, was, I needed you to tell me this to make it real, and now it's real. <laughs> Greetings from Austin, Texas. Today, I get to talk with Michelle Obama about her extraordinary memoir, Becoming. Hi. Hey. It's very nice to see you. <laughs> I thought the way you wrote about marriage in this mm -hmm. book was absolutely astonishing. One of the reasons why I chose to share so much about our marriage is because I think about young couples mm. and how little we know when we get married about what marriage is. Yeah. I mean, nobody is giving us a guidebook on how to do this thing called building a life with a whole nother person. Mm -hmm. Michelle Obama, like, can you believe it? Like, I'm about to be in her presence. We are gonna do a rapid fire fiction, nonfiction. Okay. I'm gonna ask you some questions. I'm ready. Your husband picked you up in a car with a hole at the bottom of it. Oh, heck yeah. So how? <laughs> this yellow Datsun, that used to shake violently. And then we start driving and I can see the street, the pavement <laughs> passing. And I'm like, dude. I actually discuss a lot with my audience about how when we prioritize intimate partnerships, really do a disservice to how bountiful other relationships in our life yeah. can be. So what I appreciate, particularly in the first half of Becoming, is how you do acknowledge the diverse range of relationships you've had in your life and how fulfilling they are to you. When you're out of your comfort zone, that the first thing you need to do is build your own community. And I hope in this day and age where we spend so much time on the phone that we understand nothing replaces yeah. the human connection that we get from our friendships aside from our partners. And I love my husband, but there are times I need to go to my friends to talk about my husband. Mm. Right, yeah. 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 And then I went home and I was like, oh, you're not so bad. <laughs> I am meeting Michelle Obama, and I am so excited to be in conversation with her. Hi, I'm Kat. Nice Kat. to meet you. Was there anything about the process of writing that was unexpected? I loved my process mm -hmm. because I love collaboration. Mm -hmm. So a lot of it, the, the, the beginnings of it, before we started writing, I spent time with my chief of staff, with one of my former speechwriters and with my collaborator, who I learned to trust. But we spent months and months and months together mm -hmm. talking. So a lot of it was therapy, right? right. <laughs> I needed to say stuff. I needed to say it. I needed to have it heard and then I could process it. And can I get you to do your go-to dance move? Oh gosh, I don't know that I have a move. I just have, I just have a, you know, I'm at that age now where you try not to do the name dances or else your daughter's like, stop. So I just sort of have my, you know, your standard, you know, it's more the lip, you know, the face is just as important. Yes. Yeah. 
I'm meeting Michelle Obama today. I can't believe it. I'm so excited to discuss her book, Becoming. Are you ready for this? I'm ready. My heart is racing. Oh, Jesse, ask your question. Jesse, today. don't speak up, Brett. My palms are sweaty and my knees are shaking. So what are some of your favorite books and do you have any like special memories surrounding those books? One of my favorite books in the whole world is uh, Toni Morrison's Song of so Solomon. Mm. And I always think, I wonder why do I love this book so much? And then I pick it up in the first page, I'm like, oh, the words, the story, the characters. If I think of how I wanted the stories to come out, I think of the storytellers I love. You know, I wanted there to be sections in there that took you to the place where you could be in my room and see the tree and feel the, you know, I wanted people to be able to feel it like good storytellers. I cannot wait to talk to her. As the only Canadian here, feels like a very special privilege. What was it that drew you to a book? Like, why did you feel that as an anchor? Do you know how rare it is that a living African-American woman from a working class community gets to write her story in a way that will be read? The little bitty journeys that I take you through in my life, that little Michelle Robinson that you fall in love with, you know, everyone has those stories. And that's what tells people who I am. If you had a tip mm -hmm. for anyone watching who is scared of making a big change, what is that strength? How do you help yeah. yourself? I think knowledge helps. So understanding what you're swerving from and what you're swerving to mm. can give you sort of a better understanding of how to tap into your truth. Finding people who support your swerve. Barack, my husband, was that right. person for yes. me who said, you know what, I've got your back. I mean, I knew intrinsically that my parents would always have my back, so yeah. that helped. So finding the community of support right. in your swerve, because there'll be plenty of people who'll tell you, what are you doing? Don't do that. And you've got to find a community of support yeah. uh, through that process. Yeah. Another book that, um, I connect really good memories to his Life of Pi mm -hmm. mm. because it's the one book that me, Barack, uh, and the girls read together. Oh. Sometimes the books that you read in community mm -hmm. yeah. make the community stronger and that well, that's in turn, the best way yeah. to read a book. That's why oh, we I have so the book club yeah. here is yeah. we're going to read and discuss it with friends. Yeah. The yeah. shared experience. Yeah. yeah. It does make a book so much better make to talk about it with friends. Yeah.